In a searing concert diatribe now inflaming tensions between Hollywood's elite entertainers and the former royals, pop superstar Lady Gaga launched an unprompted verbal Armageddon against Meghan Markle that left audiences at Miami's FTX Arena reeling. While headlining the final American engagement of her massively lucrative, Chromatica Ball, world tour, the Oscar-nominated artist periodically paused between serpentine dance numbers to excoriate the Duchess of Sussex, at one point directly denouncing her as, that ginger oppressor, who, sucks terribly at being an actual human being. I'm so sick of privileged racist white do-nothings like Meghan hijacking my community's radical justice movements just to squeeze more fame from manufactured oppression, Lady Gaga ranted flanked by a diverse ensemble of drag queens, burlesque dancers, and marginalized youth representatives during an impassioned show interlude. This exhausting ginger oppressor clearly sucks terribly at being an actual human being based on how haggardly she continues abandoning her husband and children to pursue her pathological need for cheap celebrity at any cost. The vitriolic tirade cemented a sudden resurgence of anti markle sentiment now spreading across the entertainment industry's most progressive circles and activist coalitions dismayed by the former Duchess's public re-embrace of racial capitalism and corporate brand partnerships. During a scathing 15-minute intermission monologue amidst the Electronica spectacle, Lady Gaga expressed her dismay over the recent revelations Meghan had resumed pursuing commercial endorsements hawking everything from Israeli makeup contouring sticks to African Union-busting coffee moguls despite the royal burnishing her philanthropic image across humanitarian NGOs. Let me perfectly clear, none of my true LGBTQAI plus and POC comrades share a single ounce of solidarity with that white Cherokee woke scold craving McDonald's serfdom level of American corporate franchise crumbs in exchange for basically upholding degenerate Western capitalism system of systemic racism and sexist patriarchies, Gaga shouted, her two-toned wig and smeared prima donna makeup dripping with sweat across the arena's plasma video screens. Just because Meg's finally achieved the fame she always craved doesn't absolve her perpetuating exploitation against the global South on behalf of McDonald's, Amazon, and all the other antichrist multinationals now colonizing Africa and Asia. By slapping her sycophant smile on Frankenplantations degrading indigenous farmers' lives abroad, she's literally whitewashing all her meaningless diversity drivel over here. Sources close to the Duchess of Sussex expect her legal team to strongly rebut the performer's allegations while exploring possible defamation claims over associating Meghan with colonial genocide franchises ravaging the developing world. Both royal sides already appear preparing for an unprecedented public relations fracas pitting two of the liberal West's most prominent female cultural icons against one another. However, the House of Windsor remains mired in turmoil with no easy legal avenues to push back against Lady Gaga's searing publicity onslaught now dominating Sokol media trending far beyond music fans alone. The performer's concert tirade has also triggered unexpected outrage across independent humanitarian networks still grappling with the Sussex's widely panned publicity tour throughout impoverished regions of West Africa this past spring. Already implicated in multiple human rights violations allegedly committed across Nigeria, any new corporate partnerships brokered by Meghan and Harry reviving Western commercial exploitation of the Global South risk reviving the public relations maelstrom that nearly engulfed them just weeks ago. We're unfortunately encountering more disturbing circumstantial evidence potentially validating Lady Gaga's allegations about Meghan ingratiating herself into the very same institutional spheres of corporate colonialism eviscerating our poorest constituencies at gunpoint across the continent, revealed Ibrahim Zango, a prominent activist with Nigeria's Human Rights Writers Association tracking the ex-royals monetizing their philanthropic brands. The Duchess's undisclosed endorsements apparently benefiting entities like Madame Wagner's Cosmetics and Lacoste have unsurprisingly aligned their supply chains exploiting the very sweatshop abuses she so vociferously condemned just months ago. While legal liabilities remain murkier, the escalating performers' accusations have already reverberated across social media, reigniting the incendiary hashtag abolish the monarchy conflagrations that nearly engulfed the British crown in anti-racist convulsions throughout the past three years. On multiple platforms, progressive activist coalitions have rapidly realigned behind Lady Gaga's moral critique of Meghan's commercial activities in Africa and the Middle East allegedly exacerbating the very inequities and exploitations she decried amidst her humanitarian grandstanding. While we remain steadfast in our commitment to extinguishing the racist colonialist institutions like the monarchy which enabled so many atrocities over the centuries, 
we cannot tolerate any hypocrisy in whatever guises it manifests among our putative compatriots. Declared prominent hashtag abolish the monarchy activist Naomi Elcock representing a global cadre of decolonization scholars disavowing any further association with the Duchess. Lady Gaga spoke nothing but truthful fire over Meghan's complicity regurgitating oppressive regimes of exploitation plaguing the very Palestinian, Congolese, and native communities she fraudulently hoisted as supposed solidarity muses. Until she categorically divorces herself from these profiteering schemes, no amount of mansplaining Sussex spin can launder her from the moral stains of being another corporate shill serving the same masters we still resist, despite her and Harry's feigned racial Tourette's. At its core, Lady Gaga's concert invective ignited against Meghan Markle for reneging on her once steadfast public stances surrounding feminist solidarity, climate justice, and decolonizing racism throughout the developing world. The Grammy winner's excoriation particularly focused on evidence her Israeli Shutzpah, cosmetic sponsors maintained factory outposts in the occupied Palestinian territories notoriously subjugating teenage female workers. Even more inflammatory was the unconfirmed leak of an alleged preliminary non-disclosure pact Meghan had purportedly signed with a Johannesburg-based conglomerate cultivating palm plantations and agricultural interests across the Congo Basin displacing indigenous tribes into refugee camps accused of perpetrating slavery and mass sexual violence against local women. While Archwell has furiously denied any commercial ties beyond the Duchess's upcoming speaking tour, leaked emails appear to validate she actively courted these opportunistic endorsement overtures despite their dire human rights records. I literally used my entire fortune and life's work to evacuate raped Iraqi and Syrian diasporas finding refuge in America from the very same kind of fascist atrocities Meghan now basically endorses through shitty makeup collabs. Lady Gaga howled while wearing a scorpion-shaped loincloth amid simulated pyrotechnic hell's capes during her epic concert rant. So when I see that grifter duchess shilling for these plantation oppressors against brown and black girls overseas, it makes my heart and stomach convulse as badly as my PTSD from getting assaulted at 19 years old. Upon witnessing uncensored videos of Lady Gaga's fulmination circulating like wildfire across social media platforms, Royal commentators universally concluded the Duchess and her floundering publicity corps remain ill-equipped to defuse the latest public relations disaster unfurling. Unlike the well-oiled damage control response units meticulously engineered for decades by Buckingham Palace, the beleaguered ex-royals have consistently struggled deploying nimble countermeasures necessary to combat their steady reputational ablution across mainstream culture. If Meghan possessed even one-tenth the self-awareness possessed by Lady Gaga,